What's up everyone, Willie Apple here, and today Apple has released macOS 26.2 to everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you what is new inside the software. We got a lot to talk about, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing you'll notice right off the bat is that if you go to the Safari app, and then look at the icons right here, you're going to notice that a lot of them has changed, if not, a lot of them has been added, since a lot of them did not have icons before for whatever reason. So the first one you'll see that, that has been added is settings for this website, connection, security details, clear history, managed profiles. Next one has to do with file menu, then edit, and then the view menu. You can get the point. A lot of these have been updated right here or have been added. Also going into Safari, if you were to go into a website, let's just go to willyapple.com. And then if you were to go inside of the refresh button, you're going to see that there's a hover effect right here. You did not have this hover effect before, but it's a subtle hover effect that makes most of the difference. You have that now. You also have hover effects here as well. So the reading list button has a hover effect as well. That's what it looks like. Really cool. It's a hover effect. Now the next change has to do with the Apple Games app. So if you were to open up the Games app right here, you're, the first thing you might notice right away is that you now have controller support inside of here. So this is a pretty cool feature that if you wanted to turn your Mac Mini into a game console, you can now do that. All you gotta do is have the games app full screen at full time, and anytime you want to download a game, for example, you can do that just by opening the App Store or whatever app that you're gonna use to download a game. And let's say you want to, to open up Roblox, for example. You could do that with the controller, and you could play Roblox with the controller just like that. It's very easy to do so. And then just press and hold the home button as in my controller i'm using a nintendo switch pro controller you can just open up the games app once again and then you can just launch a different app now this app does not have controller support but we'll still look at it anyway wink wink add controller support but as you can see this app does not have controller support right now but if you were to open up the games app again you can just switch the game just like that just in case an app does not have controller support this could come up with a pretty cool idea of maybe turning your mac into a nintendo wii if you have the games of course then you could just use the dolphin emulator to use the games that you already own on your mac mini now the next feature of mac os 26.2 is a really cool one so let's say you have Thunderbolt 5 ports on the M4 Max, M3 Ultra, M4 Pro Mac Mini, not just the normal Mac Minis like what I have, or the M4 MacBook Pros. You actually have a, a really cool feature called linking. You can link multiple Macs together to create a supercomputer inside this latest macOS update. So this is mainly meant for people who buy the top of the line M3 Ultra Mac Studios. And if you buy multiple of these, you could just create a whole supercomputer just by linking all of these Mac Studios together if you were to buy like 50 of these. So if I were to buy like 30 of these, you could just create one big massive supercomputer if you were willing to spend half a million dollars on it. Which I think is really cool. Now, I do not have any Macs with Thunderbolt 5 ports or a Thunderbolt 5 cable right now, which is actually pretty expensive. I'm not able to show you at this time, but it's just a really cool feature for people who really want a new Mac Pro. You can just buy multiple Mac Studios now, which is really cool to see. Also in the games app, if you were to go to the library section, you're going to see you now have the ability to filter your game library. So you could do it by recent games and do it by your name. And you could add filtering options. So if you want the games to specifically be on your Mac, you could do that. If you want it to be designed for all apps, you could just do it just like that. I don't know why my Mac apps aren't showing, but because I did not select. Oh, I'm kind of stupid there. But you could do that just like that. You could also have the the games that your friends are playing if you have friends inside the app and then the next thing is that if you were to go inside of the leaderboards those now update instantly instead of just having time needed to wait for that all right the next change has to do with the reminders app if you were to go to the reminders app right here the first thing you'll notice is that the siri suggestions icon has been updated so the if you were to go inside Siri suggestions, it now looks a little bit different to get to it. The second thing is that if you were to go into reminder, you're going to see that there's a new toggle right here that says urgent. So basically what this does is that if you were to turn it on, it will tell you to go to your phone to allow alarms. And then once you allow alarms, you're able to just set an alarm pretty easily from your Mac and it will just ring on your iPhone. Now, now why don't they just set the alarms on the Mac? That is because if you were to just search up alarm kit on the internet right here, you're going to see that it is restricted to iOS and iPadOS only. They did not bring this API over to macOS. So therefore, they added the ability to set an alarm with 
your iPhone, which is kind of stupid to see. I don't know why they just wouldn't bring Alarm Kit over to macOS. I mean, we already have a clock app that barely works with the alarm feature. It seems like Apple kind of knows that the alarm feature is kind of bad on macOS, so they just decided to not create Alarm Kit. All right, so the next feature has to do with Photo Booth. So if you were to open up an app that uses the camera right here, you're gonna see that you have the ability to turn on an edge light. So it is turned off by default, but if you turn it on, that's what the edge light looks like. You could hover around and you can see that's what the edge light does. And then you're able to just move it around and it's just pretty cool to see. This is especially useful if you're in a dark setting. So I just turn off the light. This is what it looks like with the, with the edge light. And then this is what it looks like without the edge light. And this is what it looks like with normal lighting. And this is what it looks like with both. I don't see a difference there. But if you are having a meeting in a dark setting, you're able to turn on edge light. And then you're able to adjust the brightness. You could just make it a thin light or a thick light or a warm white light or a cool white light. That is what is new with the camera settings inside of macOS. And let's go on to the next feature. The next feature has to do with AirDrop. So if you were to go inside of AirDrop settings and if somebody were to go inside of here and then AirDrop you something, you're able to send them a code. And that code lets you airdrop for 30 days with nothing even if it's on contacts only they're able to airdrop to you and that's because if you you're going to see a section right here that says known airdrop contacts so anytime anybody airdrops to you that airdrop contact will go in here if you do the code setting you're able to see them right here delete them from here they no longer have access to the airdrop so it is a pretty safe system this is in response to apple nerfing airdrop on ios 16.2 and people not knowing how to turn on their airdrop settings but since people don't know how to turn on their airdrop settings and apple doesn't want to make airdrop good again this is their basically only other alternative to just making it everybody permanently but maybe adding a button that says turn off for me because i've been in so many situations where i ask somebody if i could airdrop to them i try the touching phones together thing that doesn't work at all sometimes apple please fix that and it's just been very bad ever since apple kind of disabled airdrop in ios 16.2 but that's more of an ios thing we're talking about mac os let's get back on topic willy but let's go on to the next feature the next feature has to do with the news app and going inside the news app right here you're going to see a couple brand new changes you're going to see that the sidebar has been updated right here the sidebar is a lot more simplified so you have today news plus and a bunch of other things right here you also notice that we got some brand new icons right here so these icons here used to be like gray in the background with like pink on the foreground now it is white in the background and black in the foreground the next thing has to do with the search if you were to go inside the search section you're going to see that the sections icons have been redesigned right here they're now more windows longhorn like i think and the third change is that we have a behavior change that is probably due to a mac catalyst kind of feature since the news app on mac os is basically poured over from ipad os if you were to go into the search you're going to see that it now says no re recent searches before it would just stay on this screen right here but now if you were to immediately go inside of the search field and click it and now it just says no recent searches now obviously we did have recent searches it would show up right here but that's what's new inside of the news app let me briefly mention it real quick if you were to go and set the clock app for example and then do that and compare it to what you have in 26.1 you're going to see it looks a lot different this is more of a liquid effect i think it's more liquidy which looks a lot better now the next thing has to do with the control center if you were to open up the control center right here you're going to see that we now have a drop shadow effect this is exactly what it looks like on ipad os there's a drop shadow effect there because if you did not have that on iPad OS, because Living Glass is more buffed on iPad OS, you would not be able to see things at all. But this is what the control center looks like here. Now, the next thing is that if you were to go inside of Do Not Disturb and then click on Sleep, and now it is purple. Before it would be green, but since Apple started rebranding the Sleep to be purple, starting with Watch OS 26.0 oh beta 3 i believe it is now purple now the reason why apple did that was most likely to make things consistent now the next thing is that if you were to open up an app right here let's open up willy widgets and if you were to full screen the app right here you're able to see that if you were to change your mac volume it's now in the center before it would be on the right so this is what it would look like right here it'd be on this side but now if you were to adjust your volume or your brightness it is now 
right here. Now, the reason why my brightness is on the right is because this is because of a third party app that lets me change my brightness because I have a non Apple display. Now, the next thing has to do with the podcast app. So if you were to open up the podcast app right here and then go into a podcast episode, you're going to see that you now have live lyrics. So this is what the live lyrics looks like. It's basically just Apple music just without like instead of convicted, for example, being like that. And it just smoothly, it just immediately hovers the word. Still better than what Spotify has. <laughs> and now the next thing is that if you were to open up this right here, a lot of the podcasts, like especially the older ones, did not have any of the chapters, but now they do. And it will indicate that it was automatically created by AI, basically not Apple intelligence, it's just Apple servers doing it on the server end. You have this little sparkle icon right here. And then the next thing is that if you were to actually go to the podcast, and scroll down you have the little links so not those links those are already there but if let's just say a podcast mentions willyapple.com it will just automatically just show willyapple.com right here and you'll be able to click it it will just open up willyapple.com and then the last new feature inside the podcast app is that it will actually show that extra people that were not mentioned in the podcast so if they were mentioned in the podcast or something like that it will actually show more credit. So basically just showing more people inside of here. Good thing. But yeah, that's everything new here inside of macOS 26.2. Now, thanks for watching. Come on, subscribe down my apps in the description down below. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.